I'm so eager to share with you results of the three research projects which you can use immediately to lower blood pressure and heart rate and hence lower the risk of a heart attack or stroke. Let's dive in. So here is the outcome of the first research. Researchers have discovered that practicing mindfulness is an effective way to lower blood pressure. Scientists reviewed 12 studies measuring mindfulness protocols and their impact on overall health, finding that mindfulness interventions led to lower anxiety, less perceived stress, fewer symptoms of depression, and improved systolic and diastolic blood pressure. The mental health benefits appear to be the reason for the blood pressure improvements. Mindfulness practices and meditation help to reduce stress, lead to lower blood pressure, and a higher quality of life overall. The second exciting research was published in the Journal of the American Heart Association, and it suggests that better heart healthy behaviors and managing heart disease risk factors, which we're going to talk about in a second, are associated with a younger biological age and lower risk of heart disease, stroke, and death. The heart healthy behaviors include the following items, dietary intake, physical activity, hours slept per night, and uh, smoking status. And there are also four clinical measurements, which include body mass index, cholesterol, blood sugar, and blood pressure. And the study in, in analyzed DNA methylation levels, which is a biomarker of biological age, and found that for every 13 point increase in the American Heart Association Life Essential 8 Cardiovascular Health Score, which actually includes all these eight items which we talked about a second ago, then the risk of developing cardiovascular disease is reduced by almost a third, 35%. Similar uh, cardiovascular death is uh, reduced by 36%, and death from all, from all causes is reduced by 29%. Research number three is actually a podcast from Dr. Andy Galpin, who is a professor of the California State University. And um, he talks about the three indicators which he regularly reviews, things like VO2 max, uh, resting heart rate, and uh, respiratory rate. And Andy explains very well to, to have uh, as high as possible VO2 max why it is so important to have a resting heart rate below 60 beat per minute, and why it is better to have lower respiration rate than higher respiration rate. I strongly believe in these indicators. Obviously, they do not replace visiting your doctor, but watching these three indicators closely, reviewing them at home, helps you to make a decision if you actually need to go and see a doctor. And finally, one more thing. If you are a believer in um, uh, growing your VO2 max uh, number, as, as I do, then I strongly recommend to watch a podcast which we just recently recorded with my friend, uh, biochemist, Dr. Chong He, where we interviewed an expert in this field, Professor Martin Gibala from the McMaster University in Canada, where he explains in more detail why VO2 max is so important how actually improve it, and how to measure progress at home. I will also provide link to this uh, podcast in the description to this video. If you find uh, this video helpful, please like it, and uh, please subscribe for more videos about heart health and how to lower heart rate and blood pressure. Have a wonderful day.